So they wanted a local person, and that's how I got onto Radio Antilles. So I was the first local West Indian person to be on Radio Antilles, yes. That's way back in 1968, long before you. Oh God, I'm going to try to figure out how old you are, Brian. Yeah, right, no, 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 don't, don't try, don't try. Don't try, right? Fifties? <laughs> yes, Sixties? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, whatever I want to give you, seventy. I'm, I'm a mature age. You're a mature age. age. <laughs> <laughs> but looking good. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, so after that, I did six months of Radio Antilles, and then I went to study. So you were not on Radio Antilles for a very long time? I came back. Aha! Yes. Then I, help me understand yes, that part. Yes, I came back to Radio Antilles. I was a Radio Antilles in the 60s, late 60s. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to study in, um, in, in, in Canada, and I came back, when I came back from studying in Canada, there was no job for me in Monster at the time. So I got hired by an old friend of mine who was the newsreader on ZAL television in Antigua. And ZAL television um, also broadcast to Montserrat. I said, Brian, we need you. We need you to come over here. So I came to, to Antigua, and I went to Antigua. And I lived in Antigua for five years. At, um, and doing the weatherman, doing the weather show, the weather program, and news on ZAL television in Antigua. So I have, I, have, have, I have a television background as well. So I did that. And I did it for a period of time, and then I went back to Radio Antilles when Julian Rodgers came to Radio Antilles in the 90s. Oh, this 90s. man is yes, a man right, with yes, another yes. beautiful, voice. hypnotizing that's voice. Right, that's <laughs> right. In 1974, and that's when Radio Antilles took off, and that's where everybody knows me from then. All right. Most people know me from that time, from 1974. From 1974. Who were some I, of the other voices? We had Jeff Fede, we had Julian Rogers, we had Lou Smith, we had Raymond Lawrence joined us. We had Albert Jabari. Raymond Lawrence? Yes, yes. Yeah, Raymond Lawrence. Raymond what time Radio Antilles? What rest the rest, right? Yeah. See, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I swear I never knew that. <laughs> Raymond Lawrence, and I'll, I'll give a little bit of history Raymond in a, in a few minutes. Um, then we had um, Lou Smith. I, said. I met Lou Smith right. sometime, some years ago. Right. Is he from Grenada? He's from Grenada. Yes. Then you had um, Albert Dubai Richards. I just spoke to him the other day. He's, he's in Connecticut. Uh, Gus White, Rose Willock. And we had journalists from Trinidad. We had Jimmy Maynard, who's now deceased. And we had Albert, Albert, no, Albert Frampton, was his name? He was all, no, um, Ashton Chambers, right, from, from, from Trinidad. And we had Bernard Graham, also from Grenada. Uh, he was a short story writer, right, but he has since, since passed on. And those are some of the names of, and Andy Lawrence, who I see on Facebook almost every day. He's in England now. He came from Antigua. And we had Bill Warren, who also came from Antigua. And we had um, Joe Dominique from Dominique, who came up there. there. I don't, don't, don't remember Joe Dominique. He's down with St. Martin. Okay. And, um, and those are some of the names that I can remember. Of course, Jeff Fede. So some people will remember Jeff Fede. Yes, I've heard that yes, name. Yes, I've right. heard your name. Mm -hmm. Of course, Dubai. Right. Everybody right. knew about Dubai, Dubai and yes. so on. But how did this radio station become so popular? I was I was not born in some of the instances here. Right, right, <laughs> but right, right. Yeah. I knew about radio. Yes. I knew about radio, radio Antilles. Mm -hmm. And I, I heard about radio Antilles. Right. Um, but it appears to have been probably the most popular radio station. Yes, yes. Yes, Radio, Radio Antilles, and I, I really must give good, um, a perfect credit to, um, to Julian Rogers because he was the one who really put it back put it on the map. What happened, Radio Antilles started first as a Caymanist to, it was, as, no, let me put it this way, it was, most, it was the most powerful radio station in the entire Western Hemisphere, including North, North America. Because in, it was powerful in terms of its outreach? Yes, and, and, and the wattage. Okay. The transmitter was 200,000 watts. I see. Mm -hmm. In the United States, you cannot have a radio station with more than 50,000 watts. That's, that's by law. Okay. So, Radio Antilles now was 200,000 watts. It was set up by a Swiss German gentleman who wanted to reach the German population in Central South America. So, the initial, the initial programming was English, French, and Spanish. The Spanish was done in the evening. Why? Because at night, AM signals travel farther. So they were able to reach Central South America in the evening. So the Spanish programs came on from 8 to 9 o'clock until 12 o'clock midnight. And then the French, because Guadeloupe and Martinique, especially Guadeloupe, they were on the RFO. They didn't have any commercial radio stations in those days. So they were able to reach Guadeloupe from Montserrat and across the English. When the management changed hands, Deutsche Welle, 
who was the BBC equivalent of Germany, they bought up the radio station. Mm. And they sent a general by the name of Christian Knapp. And he hired Julian Rogers because he felt that we need to have a more Caribbean presence because they felt that the radio station needed to have more Caribbean music to it because we used to have um, English disc jockeys in those days. Okay. And they played all pop music in mm -hmm, Arabian. Mm -hmm. And now Caribbean music was not being played. So they phased those out and then they brought in uh, Julian. And then Julian now brought in all the Caribbean um, uh, disc jockeys and journalists and so on. And that's how we did it. And we said, okay, fine, we, we, we must be a news station. We must be balanced and straight down the line. And that's where we got our name from. It was great. I mean, it was great working there. Um, what you did there? What you did? I did. I first. I did journalist, and I was a journalist first and broadcaster because I did news as well as I did uh, broadcasting. I would work um, in the, do the afternoon shift, do the news, read the news, and then do an evening um, program. And uh, and then I also eventually I did sales after a while because I was I was very very good in sales, you know. Then what else did I do? Oh yes, and then we just linked up with the whole, the, the whole, the whole Caribbean, mm -hmm. you know. Then we made our names ourselves when we were the ones who promoted Exile One. Exile One with Rosita, because we had a top 40 show. I'll never forget, that's how I met Gordon. Exile One was, um, Rosita became number one on the top 40. It was the first Caribbean record to be number one on Radio Antilles, ever in the history of Radio Antilles. It was there for eight weeks. Eight weeks? Eight weeks. And never forget that. Rosita. And that's how this whole kind of slip so thing, that's how we, we enjoyed it and we played it. We just loved it. And then, of course, Dubai, and of course, our, our big fan base was, of course, Dominica. Mm -hmm. Then Hurricane David hit Dominica. So what we did, what we used to do in the newsroom, we had, all of us had very powerful shortwave radios. So when we did news, in those days we didn't have internet and stuff like that, so we would monitor the Voice of America, BBC, uh, Deutsche Welle, Radio Caribbean, CBC, and Voice, I said Voice of America, just to get the news so that we can... How did you do that? Did you record it? We record it, we listen to it, and also not only that, but also to get the pronunciation of names, right? So we can write them out phonetically, so we should make sure we do that. And that's how we presented our news, that we got the news. So we, every day, as a matter of fact, it's a hobby for me. I do it all the time now. So you, you had to script it? I had to script it, mm. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and even after today, I still listen. Every time I, in the morning I listen to DBS, like Route 95, I, I just hop the... the, the yes, the, you know, so well, not today. The, today you just go on, on the internet, page, right. copy, <laughs> paste, <laughs> right. the edit, and you're good to go. <laughs> How times right, have right. changed so drastically. drastically. So, one, so when Hurricane David, we knew what was happening, because I, had a, I have a fascination for weather. So we had developed our own weather map because we realized that no other radio station in the Caribbean was dealing with the weather. So we used to do a weather program at, after the news. And we developed our own weather map, and we, and we worked with partnered with the Met Office in Antigua. And what we would do at the end of the evening at 6.30, we produce our own weather. We sort of find zone one, zone two, zone three. So we sort of followed the weather very closely. So we knew when Hurricane David was coming through. So we, we monitored, I monitored, all the ham radio operators because the shortwave radio I had, I could monitor, I could listen to how ham radio operators. And we were listening and we knew when hurricanes were passing through Dominica. Yeah, and I listened, I was tuned, we could hear nothing from Dominica, and, I tuned, and that's when I heard Fred White. Ah, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. That's when we heard Fred White, and then we were able to make contact, and then we said, okay, fine. My boss at the time said, okay, fine, listen, you guys need to get down to Dominica tomorrow. So we chartered the plate with myself, Raymond Lawrence. Abu Bakr, I forgot his name, um, he's from Guyana, he in, lives in Guadeloupe now, Abu Bakr, he has a beautiful deep voice, uh, Abu Bakr and um, Norma Waddington from Barbados, and the four of us flew on a, on a charter plane, came into Melbourne Hall at the time. To cover. To come, to cover, and then um, the Prime Minister at the time, I think Mr. Serafin, Roger Serafin, yeah, sent, mm -hmm. sent a helicopter for us, and we took the helicopter from Melbourne Hall, and they dropped us at Lindo Park. And we came in and then we made contact with Cable and Wallace and we were able to get a link from Cable and Wallace. And then we housed at Cherry Lodge Hotel 
of an attic and then we should oh, broadcast it's so beautiful night. to hear all of yes, this yes yes i didn't bathe for five days yes i'll never forget that i didn't bathe for five days you didn't you did not bathe i did not for bathe for five, five days. days because the water was contaminated and we couldn't get any, any water there's no water in rosa we eventually had to go one moonlight night because we were all up and down the place doing that, you know because we also had a team of nurses from from that came no power us. no power nothing at all so what we did one night, we drove to River Estate and went in the river. And that's where we had our thing. I never forget that. Every time I see it now, I remember those things come back to me. Yeah. And I'm happy you could share that with us yes, tonight. Yes, it's a wonderful experience, and um, it is it is very very emotional too as well. You know. Because this um, is your home. Yes. I yes, mean, this is where you were born. Yes. Yes. yes you yes, know, exactly. so to come back and see exactly. the devastation that I mean, was caused. When we flew over, I, I as far as I can remember, I think I may have counted about twenty waterfalls. Because when we flew over down from, from Melville Hall right across up to across the island, the whole island was brown. Every single tree was gone. Was gone. Was, was gone. Was blown off. Yes. So you could actually see the waterfalls in the mountain. It was fascinating. I'll never forget that. You know. And of course, everything is now grown back up now. Yes. So, yes. You know, of this, course. This, this, yeah. What's an experience? Tell mm. me about Raymond Lawrence. Oh, Raymond was was, was the boss. He's actually started a dance company in Montserrat too. Yes. Raymond started a dance company in Montserrat, Montserrat Dance Theatre. Yes. While he was there While working. While he was there working. That's right. That's right. And he, um, he, he's probably blushing right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm blushing. <laughs> and he, well, he worked in the newsroom with us, and he was very, very good. And yes, he's happiness. another Dominican with a beautiful voice. That's right. As well. That's right. That's right. Yes. So that's he worked, 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 worked for two, three years up there. Yeah, so and then this, came back down. So overall, how would you rate the entire radio Antilles experience? Fabulous, fantastic. There's no other radio station like that. And it pains me that now I've come in this day and I hear radio the way it is. That's not the way how I know what radio was. We had, we had raised the level of listening to radio in for radio entries. That was when radio was radio. You know, we and you hold no you hold no qualms about saying I hold, that. I have no qualms about saying that at all. I'm very disappointed in what I hear today. And because I feel that somewhere along the line it is lost. You know. Um, I, the other day I did um, some training for the radio station Posse Vibrations in, in, in Portsmouth and what I did in my training with them, I, I believe in training, we'll probably touch on that a little later on, I brought them back to the basics of radio. I said if you're going to be in radio, I believe in, in if you're going to be selling saltfish, you need to know how saltfish is made. That's correct. So if, you, if you're on the radio station and you'd be a DJ, you need to know where the name DJ comes from. Do you know it? None of them knew. And I said, do you know where radio, how radio started? And I said, you. And I and I've given the history of the radio station, all the radio stations in the Caribbean when it started and so forth. So it was an interesting thing for them. Yes. I named all the radio stations, all the frequencies, all of them. So I wouldn't mind that training myself. <laughs> <laughs> We're yes. going to take a yes. break yes. and we will come back in the spotlight tonight. Yes. It's almost like a history lesson mm -hmm. with Brian Mead here on the In the Spotlight radio show. We will take a break. And we will come back to talk some more. 